Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Let's Paint a Mini. So, uh, I wanted to move on with the Fallout board game. I wanted to try to, to knock out all of those guys, because it's not very many miniatures. It's only five miniatures. Let's just try to knock them all out there. Uh, so here we're looking at the Super Mutant, and uh, if we look at the color schemes of what we've had for the various miniatures that we've painted so far, I want to try to have kind of a color scheme that's unique to each uh, character. So this guy's got very much just kind of a metallic steel, you know, silver kind of color. He's got like black and red. She's kind kind of green and yellow. Uh, I thought that we might just do like kind of an orange and yellow and I feel like that would be a, you know, orangish yellowish and that would be a nice um, uh, contrast compared to the rest of these characters. And then for the final guy, whenever we get, move on to him, uh, we're gonna, you know, do blue because I, I feel like most of the uh, artwork for the game is is, uh, is kind of blue. I think he's a vault dweller or something like that, so they have like uh, blue uniforms or whatever. So we're gonna, we're gonna do blue for him. Um, and uh, we're going to stick with uh, kind of orange and uh, yellows and, and earthy colors for this guy. All right, so the first thing that I did was I did a, a base coat of black as... Um, uh, blah, blah. I did a base coat of black just to kind of put a base coat on there. And now we're going to start with the skin. And for the base of the skin, we're going to use this tan shadow color. It's like a skin color, but it's a very, very, very dark skin color. Uh, and we're going to use that as a base, and we're going to go over that with another color later on. So let's start with some tan shadow right here. We'll probably get out a fair amount of paint here because uh, he's got a lot more surface area for his skin compared to a lot of the other uh, miniatures. And I think what I'll do, um, what am I gonna, where am I, where's the brush that I need? Here we go, okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and use a, a, a medium round brush. This is just a medium reaper round brush. And we're gonna use this to coat all of his skin. Now I do like to start with the face just because uh, I like to kind of start with the things that require the most detail while your brush is still like at its sharpest point and all that. Uh, so I like to start with the face just to kind of knock it out. And uh, what I'm going to do, as I've done with uh, all of my other miniatures, is I'm going to go around the eyes actually. I'm going to leave the eyes mostly black. And if you leave a little bit of, uh, uh, of black around the eyes, uh, if you've seen my other videos, you know, you've, you've heard me talk about it a lot, but, uh, you know, I'll just, I'll say it again here. Um, you know, just leaving a little bit of black around the eyes, uh, just kind of helps to separate, uh, the, the white that you're going to use for the eyes from the, uh, from the skin color. Now, the last couple of miniatures that I painted, uh, I don't think that I really, uh, did the mouths very correctly, especially with, uh, with this gal right here. That, that mouth is, is kind of messed up, actually. I'm gonna touch that up, uh, later on, but, uh, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of go over all of the mouth with this guy, and then we're just gonna use our, uh, dry brushing, and I think that that will be, uh, fine enough. I think I got a little bit of paint on uh, on his outfit there, just a little bit, but that's okay. I think that we'll be fine. Okay, let's move on to his arm. Yeah, like I said, this guy just has a lot more skin showing uh, compared to uh, the other Fallout miniatures. Uh, so just be prepared to um, to take your time for the skin on this guy. Okay, that's uh, part of him done there. Man, this really is going to take a little while. Like I said, he's he's got a lot of skin showing. Uh, so, you know, like I said, just just be prepared to, uh, to take your time on this. He is going to take a little while here. But that's okay, because one of the reasons that uh, he liked to paint miniatures is because, you know, it's, it's fun. And it just kind of, uh, you know, takes up some time. And it just lets you do some stuff stress-free. And it just kind of lets you psychologically unwind and have a good time. And that's what we're here for. All right, now one thing that I'm going to do really quickly is I'm going to rinse my brush off uh, just because sometimes when you have um, a particular step for a miniature that's taking an especially long time, either because, you know, you've got really, really specific details that you've got to work, 
uh, you know, work with, uh, or you just got a lot of surface area that just takes a, l a long time, you want to rinse off your brush every so often because if you don't, the paint tends to kind of like dry on the tip of your brush. Uh, and that's something that you do not want. You want to avoid that uh, just because you want uh, the lifespan of your brushes uh, to last as long as you can. Now, naturally, brushes are just going to wear and tear. I mean, that's just, you know, that's just life. You know, that happens. <laughs> but uh, yeah, whenever you can, you want to uh, try to preserve the uh, the lives of your brushes because, uh, you know, they're expensive and uh, you want to try to save money whenever you can. So uh, yeah, if, if you're taking uh, uh, a little while on a particular step, just every so often uh, rinse off your brush to uh, help preserve the lifespan of your brushes. Okay, and I think, finally, after some time, we finally got a, a layer of, of all uh, tan shadow on there. So I'm gonna rinse that brush off. Oh, silly me, actually, I forgot. He's uh, he's not really wearing shoes. Uh, so he's actually got like kind of, kind of wraps going around his feet, so his toes are sticking out a little bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and get uh, the tips of his feet here too. Don't wanna forget those, little toesies. Okay, there we go, now we got his toes. All right, so now we will rinse off that brush. All right, now I'm imagining that he's got kind of bright, radioactive, creepy, glowing skin. So I thought, let's take some fire orange and let's uh, dry brush all of the skin that we just did uh, with this fire orange color. And that'll give him a, a really nice kind of bright, creepy, glowing sort of look. All right, so I'm gonna go on to a, to a small sized Citadel dry brush. And I'm gonna use this brush to dry brush uh, all of the skin that we just did. So whenever you're dry brushing, you're gonna take a dry brush like this. This is specifically made for dry brushing. You're gonna load up just a little bit of paint onto the tip of your brush. You're gonna really slowly kind of just load up the paint onto your brush. You don't need very much. And you're actually gonna wipe off most of it. They call this dry brushing uh, because the whole point is that you've got such a little amount of paint on your brush that it's almost dry. So you're just gonna kind of do one of these numbers right here. And again, you're gonna wipe off most of it. You can kind of see there's some uh, paint on the brush, but it's it's such a little amount of paint that, yeah, like I said, it's it's almost dry. So we're gonna dry brush all of the, uh, the skin bits that we just did with this fire orange color. And I think that this will give him a nice, cool, glowing orange kind of look. And that's what we're going for. With the face, I find it the most efficient to just dry brush uh, vertically with the face. And that should kind of highlight, you know, kind of kind of dry brush away from the chin almost, you know, uh, backwards and, and sort of like a V uh, kind of level of directions, V-shaped kind of thing. And that should uh, add some orange to uh, like his cheeks and the bridges of his eyes and the bridge of his nose and the top of his head and all that. There we go. That's got kind of a kind of a cool look to it. Now make sure that uh, when you dry brush, uh, make sure that you give the uh, the layer that you've got as the base layer plenty of time to dry. If you start dry brushing immediately afterward, you risk kind of. Um, rubbing away some of the paint because it's still kind of kind of loosely on there. So uh, whenever you do this, make sure that you've given the tan shadow plenty of time to dry. Yeah, this, uh, this super mutant is uh, very, very muscly. 
I haven't played the Fallout uh, video games at all, none of them at all, even a little bit. Uh, I hope that I'm not breaking the uh, the canon of the game too much by doing this uh, this paint scheme. It kind of looks like just from all the uh, the artwork that I've looked at. Uh, the, yeah, they've just got kind of a, like a yellowish, reddish, orangish kind of thing going on. So I thought that that's what we would uh, try to emulate here. But yeah, this guy seems pretty fit. Looks like he's he's going to be pretty good at uh, uh, stomping you into the ground. Looks like somebody that you don't want to mess with uh, in a fight. By the way, whenever you do this step, you're probably going to get uh, a little bit of orange onto like all the clothes and stuff that you uh, uh, that you didn't paint yet. But that's going to be just fine. One of the reasons why we start to uh, start with the skin uh, for most miniatures is because uh, it's like the lowest lowest layer uh, of the miniature, and it's easier to dry brush and go around clothes around skin uh, than it is to do all of the clothes and then the skin underneath it. So, uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons that we do uh, the skin first. But, yeah, this fire orange has given, a, given his skin a really, really bright, mutated kind of look, which was what we were going for. All right. So there we go. We got a got a nice kind of tan or a tan orange color scheme going with the with this mutant here. So we're gonna rinse that brush off. Oh, you know what? I once again. <laughs> okay, I did it again. I forgot to go over his toes. So uh, let's <laughs> let's do that again really quickly. Man, I already rinsed off my dry brush, but that's okay. All right, let's just dab the uh, the toes here really quickly on his feet. Okay, rinse that off again. All right, <laughs> there we go. All right, so that's that's the mutant skin tone. All right, and the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do all of his, uh, like, kind of his rags and his clothes that he's wearing here. Uh, and just for the sake of simplicity, let's just try to keep uh, as, as few colors as possible just to kind of, you know, make it not too visually distracting and also just to make it... Oh, excuse me, I just burped. A uh, nice, simple paint job. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with a layer of leather brown. This is my very favorite shade of, uh, of brown. I use this brown for a lot of things. It's a very, very versatile color. I've gushed about this uh, uh, this color on the channel before. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see here. You know what? I think that I can safely get away with um, using a, a medium base brush here. It's just a little bit of a big, bigger brush. Uh, just covers a little bit more surface area, a little bit more quickly. Uh, so let's just go ahead and go over uh, all of his skin with this uh, leather brown. Yeah, what you can do is that he's, it looks like he's got kind of some, some things going around uh, uh, his waist here or around his side or, or whatever. Um, I'm not too worried about doing that. If you want, you could do a different uh, kind of color uh, scheme with those. But, you know, again, just, just for the sake of simplicity, because I like to try to keep my miniatures uh, relatively simple uh, in color design and all that, is I'm just going to, you know, use the same same color scheme that I'm doing uh, for the rest of the clothes here uh, for those those tubes wrapping around. I don't know, you might uh, you might just kind of, you know, keep them as, as dark and then go over them with, like, a bronze steel color. It looks like they might be some... Uh, um, Oh, I don't know. Uh, they could be... Well, I mean, they could be anything, really. Uh, they could be, like, little uh, scroll uh, holders. Uh, they could be just really, really big um, bullet shells. Um, you know, like tank shell casings or something like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know. They could be anything. <laughs> Looks like there's a big kind of, like, um... Oh, um, uh, like tire rim, uh, wheel rim or something like that that he's got is like kind of a, kind of a breastplate, like a cuirass kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to try to just go around that. Uh, if you get a little bit of paint on there, I don't think it'll be the end of the world though.
Man, I've said it before, I, I know that I've said it on this video multiple times now, but this guy really does just kind of take a while. So I think that one thing that would probably help, um, you can do this if you want to, uh, you don't have to. Again, I always do my base coats in black, but I think that this is one of those miniatures where you can probably get away with doing a base coat of white. Uh, and then using a shade afterward, like uh, you could use like Citadel's Agrax Earth shade. Uh, that's a really, really solid one. It's like kind of a brownish shade color. Uh, it's it's pretty uh, pretty good for doing like shade of really kind of any any color, any any kind of color scheme that you're doing here. Um, and I feel like that would be uh, uh, especially appropriate with these uh, colors that we're doing right here. So that's one thing you can do. You can do a base coat of, of white, and that way you don't need to do like multiple layers and all that. You can water down your paints to get uh, your surface area covered a little bit faster. Um, but yeah, sometimes when you do a base coat of black like this, um, it just takes multiple layers, uh, especially these really light colors like this, because you want to try to uh, get a good even coat. You know, like see right here, the, these wraps right here around his feet. Um, yeah, I definitely need to do multiple layers there. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. I'm going to rinse that brush off. Yeah, excuse me. I'm going to rinse that brush off. I'm going to move back onto the, uh, to a bigger brush just to kind of get my multiple layers going. I feel like it's just going to make it a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. I'm going to get out a little bit more paint, too. You, you probably were able to tell... Uh, but I actually had to record what I'm doing right now separately from what I recorded um, 10 minutes ago relative to this video. Um, because uh, just in the middle of me painting that other video, uh, some other stuff came up and I just kind of had to t take a break for a little bit. Uh, but I'm back in this. Hopefully uh, the transition was not as terrible as I'm imagining. But we'll, we'll <laughs> I guess I'll wait and see whenever it comes time to edit the video. But that's okay, I'm sure you guys forgive me. Hope so at least. Alright, and I think that that will do just fine. So I'm going to rinse that brush off. Alright, and I think that one thing that I'm going to move on to while that's drying is I'm going to move on to some honed steel. And I think I'm going to touch up all of the various metal bits that are all around uh, this particular sculpt. Uh, he's got some, some pieces, we'll just kind of take it one at a time and we'll go from there. I think the first thing that I'm going to start with um, is I'm actually going to uh, move back to my dry brush that I was using. And I'm going to dry brush his, his big old hammer uh, right there. And I feel like that's going to be a really uh, quick and dirty... Uh, easy way to uh, to get that steel color going for that hammer. I kind of touched on it a little bit in um, the video that I did for the uh, um, uh, Brotherhood Outcast, the the big power armor guy uh, in that video. But uh, dry brushing is is pretty nice for these Fallout miniatures because um, has a little bit of kind of a yeah dry sort of dusty look to it, which I feel like is uh, kind of appropriate for uh, for the setting. So yeah, I, I think that you can probably get away with uh, dry brushing the hammer and a uh, bunch of stuff like this. I think that that will work out just fine. Okay, let's go ahead and also do the same thing with uh, this buckler shield that he's got going on here. There we go, that'll work out, okay. Okay, rinse that off, and now I'm just going to move on to a standard brush, and I think that I'm just going to use the just really, yeah, just core usual techniques uh, for um, all of the metal around his body. So I'm going to uh, move uh, on to a uh, small-sized uh, Citadel round brush here, or not round Citadel, uh, this is just a Reaper series brush, just a Reaper round brush, I think this is a uh, small size, it's not medium sized. And I'm just gonna go over, yeah, this uh, this lock that's on, uh, that's that's right here. I guess I didn't really notice when I was doing the base code, but it looks like there's a little something kind of on his side here. All right, he's got a big old what looks like a. Uh, uh, like a big old bicycle lock almost on his back here. 
Okay, and then the big old piece that he's got as uh, like a cuirass here. This big old kind of breastplate. You know, now that I'm looking at it, I feel like one of these things here, I feel like this kind of wire, I feel like this is almost like wrapped up barbed wire that's kind of going around. So let's, yeah, yeah let's have some fun. Let's go ahead and uh, um, touch some steel onto onto that thing. There we go. Just Just for a little bit of variety. There we go. I feel like that's pretty much all of the steel bits that I want to get done there. That's looking pretty solid. Okay. Yeah, that'll work out just fine. Let's touch up the rim of this buckler here. I'll just kind of bring it out a little bit more around the edges. I think that that will be fine. All right, that'll work out. I'm going to rinse that off. All right, and next up, I want to go ahead and dry brush all of the uh, the rags and the skin that he's wearing there. So I'm going to use actually a, a golden blonde color. It's kind of like a, a really, really pale yellow almost. Uh, and I feel like that this will uh, do a decent job uh, for the robes, you know, his, his clothes, his attire and all that stuff. So I'm going to uh, go back to my dry brush and I'm going to dry brush all the clothes in the same way that we did the skin. Now we'll try to avoid going over the steel bits. Maybe I should have done this before I moved on to the steel bits, but you know, I didn't want to I didn't want to just rush straight into dry brushing right after I finished this coat. Um you know, the leather brown coat because uh you know, you you want to make sure that uh, your base coat is nice and dry uh before you move on to dry brushing above that. And I didn't really want to just stand around and wait for a minute. Yeah, I think that this was a, a pretty good color scheme to uh, to go together there. I think that that uh, leather brown was a pretty good color choice for the base coat, and then uh, using this this blonde color over that, I think that that's actually working out pretty well. Yeah, this is looking pretty solid. And I think that this guy is coming along pretty well. Yeah, he's got very much a, like an earthy kind of palette to him. Um, yeah, yeah, kind of nice, nice like desert sort of look. I don't know why, but for some reason I'm kind of seeing like a uh, like an Egyptian sort of color scheme going on here. That's kind of what this reminds me of, with the sort of like sandy desert colors, the orange and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of I'm digging this. This is coming along pretty well. Okay. All right, and I think that that will work out just fine. Yeah, that's looking pretty sweet. All right, I'm happy with that. Um, you know what? I don't have a lot more that I want to do, to be honest. Uh, tell you what I am going to do uh, really quickly. Well, not really quickly, but uh, I think the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, I'll move on to my little itty bitty tiny t tiny micro detailed brush here. I'm just going to use that blonde color that I was just using, and I'm going to use that as a base color for his eyes. They're not going to be pure white. They're going to have this little tiny bit of a yellow sort of look to it, but I think that that's okay because, yeah, the whole thing is that he's a mutant, right? So his eye color is probably going to be just a, a little bit, a little bit different. I think that that'll be fine. All right, that'll work out for the eyes as a base color. I'm going to rinse that brush off, and I'm going to move back on to uh, some pure black. And I really don't need very much at all. I'm just going to dot the eyes with this pure black. That will be fine. It maybe looks a little bit bug-eyed, but I think that that will work out. Let's, I don't know, I don't normally do this, but let's give him some eyebrows. Let's give him some, some slightly expressive eyebrows. 
I think that uh, the mutants don't have eyebrows now that I think about it, but... <laughs> oh well, that's fine. Um, I don't know, let's have a little bit more fun, even. I'm kind of imagining he's got... he's kind of going through a punk rock phase. Maybe, uh, maybe he's doing some, some metal going on here, so maybe he, uh, did his fingernails black. Yeah. Maybe he's been watching uh, one too many uh, videos of uh, or interviews of John Romero, <laughs> and uh, he's he's kind of kind of getting into uh, uh, yeah, like I said, his his heavy metal kind of phase. All right, and honestly, there's not a lot more that I want to do. I think the last thing that I'm going to do, I think that this is just going to be a purely optional thing. I don't think that you need to do it if you don't want to do it, but I kind of want to put a little bit of shade in there, and I kind of want to, like I said, I was talking about it earlier. Let's let's uh, show off a little bit more of that Agrax Earth Shade that I was using, if I can find it. Yeah, this uh, this is a Citadel brand of shade called Agrax Earth Shade. It's got a little bit of like a brownish kind of color to it. Uh, it's pretty solid. It's it's all all around uh, easy to use, um, and it works out for pretty much anything that you want to do. So I'm going to find my shader, wherever it's at. Where are you at? Whoops, knocking stuff over. Here we go. All right, this is a, a medium shade brush, uh, and I'm just gonna go over the whole the whole guy uh, with this shade, and I think. That will create just enough uh, shade to add a little bit of uh, depth, a little bit of color variety. Again, you do not have to do this. I would say that if you're happy with the miniature the way it is, you, you definitely don't have to do it. But I just kind of wanted to show this stuff off because it is, it is really nice stuff. Uh, what's nice about this shade uh, is that it's a really, really thin substance. So what it does is it actually kind of like seeps its way into the uh, like deep lines and the and the lower crevices and all that of the miniature. So it uh, yeah, I mean it's it does what it says it does. It it creates shade. Uh, that's the point of it. So um, yeah, if you can, I would say get your hands on on some of this stuff because it is it is pretty nice. Um, and again, you can use it for pretty much any color combination. It works uh, for pretty much anything. So um, yeah, let's let's go ahead and just just show off this stuff. Uh, for a minute here. And then I think with that, I'm going to call it with this miniature. I don't think there's really a lot else that I want to do with it. I think that this is going to be a pretty straightforward paint job. He's just big. He's just got a lot of surface area, so he just kind of takes a little while. That's really the only thing about this miniature, but I think that if you don't overcomplicate it and you, uh, you know, just want to have a good time and, and get a really simple paint job to kind of get the whole guy down, um, then, I, uh, then I think that you'll have a pretty good time. <laughs> I actually used this stuff on uh, my witches uh, when I painted uh, some Mansions of Madness miniatures. I painted the witches. Kind of kind of saved my miniatures. I wasn't super happy with the paint job that I had in the middle of it, so I used this stuff and uh, made it a lot better. Made it work out uh, quite a bit more. So yeah, sometimes if you want to be like really lazy or if you just want to... Um, uh, kind of give yourself a little bit of security when it comes to your shades and your colors and all that. Uh, yeah, this stuff here. Uh, again, Citadel brand Agrax Earth Shade. Good stuff. All right, and I think that with that, I'm going to go ahead and call it. So uh, there you go. Um, I don't know how canon accurate it is, but that's um, that's a mutant or a super mutant from uh, the Fallout board game. So thank you everybody for watching. If you want to see more um, fun miniatures being painted, if you want to see more goofy hobby board game stuff and also some video game stuff flavored in there uh go ahead and subscribe to my channel um i'm trying to uh get into a more like routine of, of posting things on a more regular basis but uh yeah we'll just we'll just you know do what i can um yeah i'm not really going to keep up any more of your time thank you all so much again for watching we'll see you next time bye